In my last video, I showed you how to set up an effective, good-looking menu using the built-in page navigator that's easy to set up and to maintain. However, sometimes you might want to add a little bit of extra to your menu. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a trick that opens endless possibilities when it comes to the design of your menu so that you can build, for example, something like this over here. Well, let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's talk a little bit more about the design of a page navigation menu. As a starting point, I take the menu that I've built in the previous video, which basically consists of two parts, the built-in page navigator, and then in the back, we just have a rectangular shape. Now, the big advantage of using the built-in page navigation is that everything nicely updates when you add a new page to your report or when you change the order, it automatically reflects in your page navigation. For example, over here, I can add a page, go back, I see it added a button to my page navigation, which already has an action assigned to it. So when I click on it, it brings me to the new page. And also when I change the page order, then it automatically reflects in my menu. So how can we now take this menu to the next level? Well, the first part of the trick is that we can overlap different shapes and elements in our Power BI report to create certain effects. And basically we did that already over here because here we have a page navigation and we have the background, which is a rectangular shape. And the shape can be anything. For example, here we can go to shape and we can choose something else. Let's go for a parallelogram, parallelogram. And then we can go to style and here we can turn the border off. All right, so now I just have to make it a little bit smaller, maybe like this. And then I take my page navigation and I drag that a little bit more to the right. Now the shape is a little bit more unusual. However, you can make this look very good, but you just have to be a bit more creative. Now let's go to formatting and then here under style, and then we can push the text a bit more to the right. So for example, 50 pixels. And now I want to change the fill color for this selected state. So let's go for selected and then to fill. And here I don't want to have any transparency. So I'm going to put that to zero. However, now I want to make it look as if those buttons that are not selected are pushed to the back. Now, how we can achieve that is by going here back to default. The color stays as it is. However, I'm going to put up the transparency a little. Now, this is a little bit too much. Let's go for, let's say, 10%. Now you see it looks as if the unselected buttons are pushed to the back. And when you hover over it, it's kind of nice that the icon shows on top of that background shape. And also for the buttons themselves, we could go for a different shape and we could choose the same shape as we had for the background, just like this. And also that looks quite interesting. Now let me give you another example, but then for a horizontal menu. Now here, this is the horizontal menu that I've built in the last video. And also here, instead of a rectangular shape, I'm going to choose a different shape, maybe a line this time. Now this is a little bit too thin. So here in the style, let's go to border and let's choose the right color and make it a little bit thicker. Let's go for maybe three pixels. Now I'm going to take that line and put it more or less in the middle, just like this. And you see, it is important that that selected button is not transparent. So let's select over here our menu, go to style, and then here for the fill color, for the selected state, there I put the transparency to zero. And this already looks quite interesting, especially if you start to experiment with the different shapes that are there. So here we could also go for, let's say, a pill. And you see, that looks also pretty good. Now let's maybe also create a different hover effect. So I'm going to take my page navigation, go to style, and then here I go to border. And let's add a white border and let's make it five pixels. You see, it adds a little bit of space between the pill and the line. Now we can fill up that space when we hover over it. So I go here to state, hover, and then here we choose the same color as the pills. And when I now hover over it, it fills up that empty space. And then we can make the font maybe also a little bit bigger when we hover over it. So here for the hover state, I'm gonna put that up. You see, that looks pretty good. Now this was just the first part of the trick that you can overlap different elements to create a certain effect for your menu. 
However, now I want to focus on the buttons themselves. Maybe you want to add a certain element, like a left borderline to each button when you hover over it. Well, you might think, okay, we can do the same thing. You can go here to shapes and then maybe add a little line to the left hand side of the button. However, the problem with that is that it takes a lot of time to set up and to maintain. Instead of that, you can do the following. You take the page navigation that you just built before, copy it, control C, control V to paste it. And for now, I'm just going to drag it to the right hand side of a menu. Now, the first formatting change that we're going to do is here under style. And then here, the text, I'm going to turn off. So then we basically only have the buttons without the text. Now, after we remove the text, what remains is basically just the buttons without the text. But these ones we're going to use as an extra element for the main button. Now, in this case, let's say that we want to create borderlines on the left hand side of these main buttons. Then we can go here to fill. And for fill, we choose a different color. So let's say that we want to have this color. And for the selected state, I just have to make sure that there's no transparency. So I'm going to put the transparency here to zero. So now I can resize it. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And then we put this on the left hand side of our main buttons. So now you see we have created left borderlines for buttons. And you might think, what is the big deal? We could also just have used shapes. However, the big advantage of using this approach is that when we add a new page to it and we go back, now you see it automatically added that new button, but also that left borderline is there. Now to stay organized, let's go here to view, selection pane. And then here we want to rename the menu buttons, the second pair of menu buttons to maybe menu effect. And then we can also group them together. And this is going to be my page navigation. Now let me show you more applications of this, but first I'm going to remove the background color of the selected item. So here are the menu buttons, style, and then here for selected, I'm gonna go and change the fill color to the, the same color as the background. And now we can take our menu effect and put it below our menu buttons. And once you change the layer order, we can start resizing it, which I usually would do here from general, then properties. And then here we can set the height and the width we just make it a little bit wider. For example, 100. Then I go here to position. And now I'm going to push it either a little bit up or a little bit down. So if we push it down, you see a line appears at the bottom of our buttons. And if I push it here to the right, and you see this borderline on the left hand side becomes a little bit smaller. I can just keep on pushing it. You see now we have this borderline at the bottom of our buttons. So now you can basically create a line wherever you like for your buttons. And my tip here is use the general tab and the formatting and your, the size and the position. So for example, if we have a menu buttons, here we have a height of 300 with a 200. Then for the menu effect, I could start off with exactly the same. So a height of 300 and a width of 200. And then I go to position and here I choose the same position I, as I have for the menu buttons, which is 50. Okay. And then here for the position vertically, there I have 157 and I'm going to use exactly the same over here. So that means now it's in the back and then you can start moving it up and down and to the left. And so for example, if I want to have a thicker line at the top, then you see I decrease the vertical number. If I want to have this line a little bit smaller, I just keep on increasing it. And if I want to have a little bit of a line on the left hand side, then I just decrease the number for horizontal and that's it. So now the third part of my trick, the big finale, how can we now create a very cool hover effect that makes it look like as if the button shifts to the left when you go over it with your mouse. Now first I'm going to start with that menu effect. I'm going to make it a bit smaller and let's push it first here to the left hand side of the main buttons, okay? So this is what we had before, but what we can do now is that we position them behind the main buttons. So over here, I go to general properties position and I make sure that I have here 50 and then also here for the main menu buttons, I have 50. So that when I hide the main menu buttons, only then uh, you see the borderline on the left. Now let's maybe go for a little more subtle color for these borderlines. So I go to style and then here to fill and let's choose 
darker blue, but not as dark as the background. And let's then also go to the menu buttons. And also here, I want to have that same background color. So let's go for that same fill color. And let's then also change the color for the selected state to green blue, like we had before. And then the very crucial part, what happens on the hover state? So when we go to hover, then I want to have a transparency of 100% so that now when we hover over the buttons, we only see that borderline on the left hand side. And also here we have endless possibilities when we start playing around with the different shapes and the different formatting options that are there. So it could look like this, for example, or maybe you want to go for the pill shape, or maybe you want to move the text to the right. And then when you hover over the buttons, then the pill goes to the left, just like this. Now, as you can see, this one trick opens up a lot of new design options for your page navigation menus in your Power BI reports. Now, I have another design trick coming up in the next video. So if you want to be notified when I upload that video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I want to thank you again for watching. I see you in the next one.